The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 46 of your distance learning session for Geology Over Six Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. During lesson 45, we had an assignment and it required that we should discuss the mood of life of graptolites. Secondly, that we should outline the geological history of graptolites. Thirdly, how have graptolites been preserved in geological formations? The right approach to this question, especially the first part, where it has to do with discussing, means we have to outline and then go ahead to give brief meaning for each of the, the, the aspects. Discuss the mood of life of graptolites. Now, graptolites are mostly discussed based on their morphological as well as ecological uh, features. So with respect to that, they are deep marine, meaning that they live in quiet environments where there is a lot of deoxygenation. They occur mostly in dark shell, that is, very fine grain sedimentary rocks that are always at deeper waters. They are dark color. And the dark color is attributed to the organic matter that builds them. The organic matter is the source of their food. The organic matter equally indicates few organisms and oxygen concentration at the bottom of the sea. Their shell has pyrite favoring their bentonic mode of life. Therefore, the preservation, or they are most likely preserved as floating forms. They are, their planktonic mode of life is supported by one, the bilateral symmetry of the randosum. Secondly, the presence of nema for attachment. These two characteristics, or these two features, the nema and the randosum, helps in the balancing of the organism because it floats. The second part of our question requires that we should align the geological history of graptolites. Graptolites first appeared in early Ordovician. They were widely spread during the Odosilurian period. Then they disappeared in the Devonian. So the, earlier, the earliest forms were Unicera with a simple taker. And they, were most, they most likely had a pendant randosum. And uh, there were few in numbers. And the few cases had Scandan, the were scandan forms. The third part of our question required for us to discuss how 
Graptolites have been, have been preserved in geological formations. Graptolites are floating planktonic forms that sunk after death in quiet, deep, and anaerobic environments. That is why they are most likely preserved in dark shells and as carbonized impressions. Here, note should be taken that these are deeper water conditions where the whole environment is quiet with deoxygenation on the rise. They were also preserved as whitish films resembling tiny salt uh, blades. The process of fossilization is carbonization, which means that calcium carbonate is the main uh, preserving material. They were preserved as shelly fascists in deep, quiet, and deoxygenated environments. Here are deeper waters, better still at the harder environment, that is, environments beyond the abyssal plain. Now, our topic of discussion remains paleontology. We have seen the scope of paleontology, types of fossils, conditions necessary for fossilization, modes of fossilization, occurrence and uses of fossils, gaps in fossil records, classification of fossils. Our focus for today will be on description of fossils. So, our lesson 46 is titled Description of Fossils number 13. We shall focus on phylum hemicodata under the other dendroid graptolites. In this lesson, we look at the objectives, the prerequisites, the real life situation. We have some activities, and we we'll have equally an exercise or exercises, and we shall end our lesson with. An assignment. Our lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, we shall be able to describe and identify fossil genera under phylum hemicodata, specifically the other dendroida. This will be based on the shear form, that is, on morphological and ecological aspects of the shell. Information that is required in order that we appropriate the lesson and well involves the basis for classifying fossils, that is, the morphological and the ecological aspects that can guide the placement of fossils under this particular phy uh, phylum, as well as under the particular classes and the other. Then, groups of commonly preserved fossils. Now, a petroleum engineer visits the Bakasi Peninsula in southwest Cameroon. He collected samples of rocks in different locations and noted many types of fossil shells as well as fossil traces which differ greatly. Now the concern is what revealed the differences between these fossil shells as well as the fossil traces. Practically, it would have been the effect of denudational agents on the fossils. That is, running water action, waves, wind, ice, and gravity action. It could have been the idea of gaps in fossil record. And better still, the idea of the morphological as well as the ecological aspects of the fossils. As we go through our lesson, we will see which of these hypotheses will be able to help us 
understand what the petroleum engineer had done in the area he visited in order to bring out the differences between the different fossil uh, shells as well as the fossil traces. Now, we shall look at this photo and the fossil drawing and we deduce visible features. Why we do that? We we'll look at those external features that are diagnostic in order to class the organism under a particular genera. Look at the shell form. The second case, the drawing, the parts label X, Y, and Z. We look at X is the name, and then this is a crossbar, then that is the external form. So the diagnostic features in this case will involve the sequela which is directly attached or transit to the nema. Then we have deci, uh, decipement, which are the crossbars. Then the steep, which is the external picture. Now this guides us to the phylum hemicodata, particularly the other dendroida, that is, the dendroid graptolites. Remember that we are from seeing the true graptolites. They are characterized by rondosome with many steeps. Also, the steeps are connected by crossbars called decipements. As you can see in our diagram, this is the sequela, and this is the rondosome. And then externally you have the steeps, but within the rondosome, the rondosome we have crossbars. So, from that diagram, we realize that there are three distinct kinds of teka. You have teka that face downward, and that the first teka is tabular in its shape. The second teka is smaller in shape and size, and it is called a bi teka. Then the third teka, also called the solon teka, which is an internal tube where the next teka arises. If you look at the teka development in dendroid graptolites. This is the principal teka. Then in between which you have a smaller one called the biteka, and then attached to or where each one of them develop called the stolon, which gives the stolon teka. Then you have equally in this other form the biteka, then you have the principal teka. Then the teka variation in dendroid raptorites. You realize that in the first case, we have a bi teka, the auto teka, then the stolon, as well as the stolon teka. But in the second case, we have the auto teka, the bi teka, and the, dis the dissipament. Now, these are the different features that helps in the identification of the different fossil groups or the different genera under the dendroid graptolites. Now, shell form and mood of life of dendroid graptolites. The first case is the fossil the dito nema. That is a dito nema. This fossil form or fossil, they have a fossil shell that is triangular in outline. The steeps branch symmetrically. The steeps are also connected by a crossbar. Remember that the crossbar are, crossbars are referred to as the zippiments. They have sessile and they have attached life. That is the reason why the 
radosome is used for the attachment. Their age range is from upper Cambrian to lower Carboniferous. Note that their outline is triangular in that the steps branch symmetrically. Those are diagnostic aspects of the shell that can help identify specify on this genus. This is the shell form of the Teonema. That is, you have the circular, which is direct, which is connected over there to the Nema. Then you have the crossbar called the sepament. And then you have the steep. The second is the rando's, uh, rando pleura. The rando pleura forms. They have a shell that is made up of sterile proteins. They also develop tubes which are occupied by zoids to give a bilateral symmetry. This now helps the development of the internal stolon, which in some cases will develop a teca called the stolon teca. This is the shell form of Rhodoplera. Here you have the zoid in its feeding position. Then right down there you have the zoid retracted. And then here we have arms with tentacles. And then we have growth bands omitted. That is the case. This is a growth band, but in this case, it is the case where you have the growth bands omitted. Then we have the growth bands and the stolon. Then we have the contractile uh, stack and the zoidal tube. That is, those are the features that can help identify this uh, fossil form under the general rando pleura. Now, the geological history of dendroids. Dendroids first appeared in Lower Cambrian. They extended to Lower Carboniferous. Not very common uh, forms, except the Ditonema survived. So here, as they were extending to lower Carboniferous, a good number of them went out or went on extinction. Now the evolutionary changes shown by Graptolites. The dendrites were first Graptolites to appear in, or were the first Graptolites to appear in the Cambrian. That is during the Paleozoic. Era. The true graptolites originated from the dendroids. It means that the primitive forms should be the dendroids. Now the changes occurring when true graptolites separated from the dendroids, which are the primitive forms. Firstly, there were less of the smaller of the small taker uh, uh, forms. That is. The forms were more, or the, 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 the bitaker cases were very few, as well as the less sal cases with cross bars, also referred to as disciplinement. These cases with the bitaker and the disciplinement between the steepers were fewer. Then the true graptolites lacked internal stolon, which means that they do not have the stolon taker. Thirdly, early graptolites, that is the dendroids, had many steps, and the many steps help in the development of the cross bars in order to give the whole shell stability. Fourthly, 
Early forms have mainly simple taker. Means that the buy taker and the stolen taker were absent. Then, early forms were mostly pendant. Then the reclined forms disappeared at the end of the Ordovician period, leaving the Scandan Bicera forms that existed right up to the Silurian. Now, graptolites as environmental indicators. Now, from the different features that we have seen for graptolites, both the true graptolites and the dendroid graptolites, they are very good paleoclimatic as well as environmental indicators in terms of the uses of fossils. Now, they indicate deep, quiet, and anaerobic environments since they are mostly preserved in dark shells. So they thrive mostly, or the organisms thrive, died, and the preservable part settled right at deep sea. The appearance in shell is assurance of very deep and quiet water, of course, with deoxygenation on the rise. The medium forms rich in organic matter give that color of shell. So they are the main definers of the dark shell. Also, the reducing environment with pyrite deposition is an indication of deoxygenation nature. Now, recall that dendrite graptolites are characterized by a randosome with many steps. The steps are connected by crossbars, also referred to as discipline. Three distinct kinds of taker are involved. You have the simple taker, the by taker, which is a little bit small, and then the stolen taker. Common form, like the tail nema, are most likely distributed in rocks. That is why they are common and they could be used as zone fossils. Exercises. We are going to move into exercises to see if our content was driven home. We we'll begin with resolving uh, the real life situation that we evoked at the beginning of the lesson with exercise number one. Now, we were wondering what the petroleum engineer would have used when he visited the Bagasi Peninsula. So, what revealed the differences between the fossils observed by the petroleum engineer in the Bakasi Peninsula? A. The effect of denudational agents on the fossils. Remember that denudational agents like running water, waves, wind, and glacier will help to weather, erode, and transport materials. So maybe they would have been exposed by these agents. B, the idea of gaps in fossil records. Maybe the material that resulted to the formation of the rocks while the fossils were being preserved would have come from a metamorphic background and the conditions might have been harsh to destroy the fossils and created a gap. C part, morphological and ecological aspects of the fossils. That is, the observable, measurable, and demonstrative aspects or features that can help reveal. So the correct answer is C. The differences between the fossils observed by the petroleum engineer in the Bakasi Peninsula should have been based on the morphological and the ecological aspect of the fossils. Through our lessons, our lesson, we have been able to identify different fossil genera under uh, uh, 
on the hemic codates based on their morphological features. And this feature guides to place them under a particular phylum as well as develop the mode of life. So, automatically, he would have used the morphological features to bring the distinction in the shell, uh, in the fossil shells, as well as the differing, the differing fossil traces. Now, study the fossil drawing below and answer the questions that follow. As you study, take note of the shape and then the parts labeled X, Y, and Z. Question two. What is the shape description of the fossil above? A. Triangular. B. Compressed. C. Dendritic. D. Coniferous. The correct answer is A. The shape description of the fossil that we are just from seeing is triangular. Number three, steel from the diagram. How does the steeps branch in the fossil that we are just from seeing? A. Asymmetrically with crossbars. B. Symmetrically with crossbars. C. Laterally with crossbars. D. Transversely with crossbars. Remember that crossbars are there to help give it balance. But we want to see the symmetry description. Our correct answer is B. The steps branch in the fossil symmetrically with cross bars. Number four, label the visible diagnostic features in the other X, Y, and Z, as we have seen in our fossil drawing. A. Secular, decipiment, and steeps. B. Nema, decipiment, and steeps. C. Steeps, secular, and decipiment. D. Decipiment, secular, and steeps. Remember, the order of labeling is very important. Correct answer is A. X stands for secular, that is the beginning part of the fossil, then decipiment. For Y and steps for Z. Question number five. The genus of the fossil is that is the fossil we are from describing. A. Didymograptus or Didymograptus. B. Cytograptus. C. Tetragraptus. D. Dictonema. Our correct answer is D, the genus of the fossil, that is, under dendroid graptolites, is the Theonema. Number six, the mode of life of the fossil is, that is, still the fossil that we are from seeing the diagram, is A, boring, B, coring, C, sessile and attached. D. Borrowing. Correct answer is C. The mode of life is sessile and attached. Number seven. The age range of the fossil is still the fossil we are from seeing. A. Lower Cambrian to Upper Cambrian. B. Upper Cambrian to Lower Carboniferous. C. Carboniferous to Recent. D. Cambrian to Carboniferous. Correct answer is B, Upper Cambrian to Lower Carboniferous. As a Simon, while at home, you shall align the changes occurring when true graptolites separated from the dendroid graptolites. And secondly, you discuss graptolites as environmental indicators. While you do that at home, the following text can help you. Advanced level, geology for advanced level, the fundamentals of geology, as well as the principles of geology. We have come 
to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on description of fossils 14. We shall focus on phylum Selenterata. See you in our next class. Una tege si ma tege yob, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, tam tam amote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 